Hi, it's Alistair at Electric Scotland. This is me doing my introduction to my weekly newsletter for April the 26th, 2019. Um, I think maybe just a, a word on uh, Brexit, simply because the new Brexit party has launched as Nigel Farage, who used to be the leader of UKIP, but well, he's now formed this new Brexit party and by all accounts it's currently leading the polls if we are to have uh, the European elections uh, in May. Whether that will happen or not, of course, is still a wee bit up in the air, but uh, if we're going to take that extension to Brescott up to Halloween in October, then in fact we'll have to run these elections, which seems really stupid to me, but however, that's the way things go these days. So, um, I must confess I took off the, uh, had the Easter weekend in Toronto, I stayed with my friend Lola and, and uh, visited with her extended family. It's a year since I've been over and I must confess all the grandkids and great grandkids are certainly looking older and uh, quite some changes in some of them for sure. So I had a great time, thoroughly enjoyed it. I hope you guys did as well. So, okay, so here's the stories I've got for you this week. First story is Wallace Monument opens after refurbishment. The National Wallace Monument is reopening following a refurbishment of its exhibition galleries to celebrate the landmark's 150th anniversary. Some good new pictures uh, up there, so you might well enjoy reading that article. Then Loch Lomond Paddle Steamer opens to visitors. The last paddle steamer built in Britain is opening up to visitors for the summer season. So you make it to Scotland and you've got Loch Lomond. It would be great to take a wee trip on that. The next one I noticed was Aberdeen's grey granite transformed by International Street Art Festival. It says Aberdeen's grey granite has been blasted with colour and form as the uh, Newark International Street Art Festival takes over buildings, gable ends and hidden, hidden corners of the city. And again, some great pictures there as well. Then the next story I've got is the blooming story of Peter Barr, Govan's Daffodil King. It says he rode through Spain and Portugal on a donkey, slept under rocks with only a single blanket for comfort, and was mistaken for a famous bandit by police as he wandered through the Pyrenees. Really great story, that. So again, I hope you'll enjoy that one. That's from the Scotsman's Hands. Then we've got next Tory leader, our survey. This is from Conservative Home. It says Johnson dominates the table. He puts on 10 points and leads by 18. I think the trouble here is the, the party is the, 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 the ordinary members of the party want him to be the next prime minister, but the stupid politicians, of course, don't. And I mean, it's just ridiculous the way that there's such a massive difference between the political establishment and the ordinary people. Once again, politicians just ignoring the people. Must do something about them, really. Anyway, Governor General to honour remarkable Canadians at Rideau Hall. Her Excellency, the Right Honourable Julie Payette, Governor General of Canada, will present honours to 39 recipients during a ceremony at Rideau Hall on Thursday, April 25th, 2019 at 10.30am. Recipients will be recognised for their excellence, courage or exceptional dedication to service with one of the following honours. A notorious service decoration, this is the Civil Division, a decoration for bravery or the Sovereign's Medal for Volunteers. Then the next story I have is New Aircraft Rises Like a Balloon. This is from the BBC. It says researchers from the University of the Highlands and Islands have helped create 
a revolutionary new type of aircraft. So again, I think you might want to re read that. And then Trump to make state visit to Britain in June. It says US President Donald Trump will make a state visit to the United Kingdom in June. Buckingham Palace announced on Tuesday a trip Britain hopes will cement transatlantic relations. Then Scotland's wild salmon levels at lowest ever level. It said wild salmon catches in Scotland are at their lowest level since records began. Quite serious that. This is this sea lice on the farm salmon. It's, it's starting to devastate the wild stock. Really terrible that, you know, we'll have to do something about it. Oh yeah, then Trudeau takes sharp turn away from refugee welcome. It says the Liberal government, led by Prime Minister Justice Trudeau, says it intends to change the law to make it harder for refugees to go asylum shopping. Bearing in mind he's under a lot of pressure at the moment because we have elections in Canada in October and right now it's likely the Liberal Party may well lose. So, of course, lots of time to go. You never know what's going to happen. Okay, next story is 160-year-old Scott Mid cheers sales hike. Scott Mid Cooperate, Cooperative has overcome increased cost pressures to post a rise in annual sales after the hottest summer for decades boosted trade. Good old Scott Mid. I've always liked the co-op movement, you know, I think there's a lot to be liked about that. Okay, Scottish Future Trust, where to next? This is from the BBC. It says the Scottish Futures Trust has been uh, carving its own niche over 10 years of work across the public sector to uh, lever in private funds. So it's kind of interesting one that. And then uh, international, Joe Biden announces plan to run in 2020 US presidential election. Said the 76 year old joins a diverse field of candidates to fight the 2020 election against incumbent Donald Trump. So it was kind of widely predicted this time round, but this, so it's now definite. Then finally, Conservatives could face wipeout as Brexit Party takes a huge chunk of support in the latest poll. It says the Tories are facing a huge drop in support, with more than half of voters switching to another party. That's very serious. And it's all down to the politicians, of course. It's they that have caused all this. OK, so that's the actual news stories. Now we're on to Electric Canadian. Uh, I've got another volume of the Canadian Horticulturalist up, volume 23 from 1900. Uh, I've got sketches of Canadian life, uh, lay and ecclesiastical, it, illustrative of Canada and the Canadian Church by a presbyter of the Diocese of Toronto. This was published in 1849. So it's uh, again uh, interesting. And then Ye Pioneers of 100 Years Ago. It's a souvenir book and program by the Women's Wentworth Historical Society. Uh, it's published in 1900. So again, that's an interesting one. Then I've got a genealogical chart of the descendants of David Thompson and Mary Glenn Denning. A little bit of biography there as well, which is if it had just been genealogy, I probably wouldn't have put it up, but as it's got a little bit of bio on it, a bit of a biography, I thought I would include that. And then Veterinary Work in Canada. I found a couple of old books which give insights into how vets worked in the olden days in Canada. So you might enjoy reading those. And then the actual Wentworth Historical Society. This is one I've been looking at for some time. It says the city of Hamilton was a little over 70 years old when the Wentworth Historical Society was formed in January 1889 to promote study into and publicize the history, archaeology and genealogy of the area around the city of Hamilton at the western end of Lake Ontario, known as the Head of the Lake. 
uh, as one way of achieving its objective, the Society undertook an active publishing program, which notably, through its occasional periodical, Wentworth Historical Society and Records, which printed the best talks given by members of society meetings. The Wentworth Historical Society ceased functioning in 1925. Uh, it goes on to say, at that time, its records and books were placed in storage with the hope that the society might later be revived. By 1944, it was felt that the time had come for the formation of a new historical group in the area. In January of that year, Lieutenant Colonel C. R. McCulloch um, convened a meeting of historically minded residents of Hamilton with the objective of a meeting with Dr. Charles W. Jeffries, President of the Ontario Historical Society, to discuss the possibility of establishing a new local historical society in the city. At some meetings throughout the month of February, a constitution was prepared and a state of officers, a slate of officers shown. In March 27, 1944, 20 interested citizens met with this group and after discussion, adapted the constitution, selected the name, the head of the Lake Historical Society and confirmed the executive. The first general public meeting of the new society was held in the old art gallery on Main Street West uh, near James on March the 31st, 1944. And uh, I've got all that up on a separate page for them and I have also acquired an early volume that you could read on online. And I've also given you a link to many more editions on the Internet Archive. Then finally there's a wee story from Conrad Black saying uh, a wrecking is in store for Democrats. Okay, so on to Electric Scotland. Uh, I've got the Scottish Review, um, it's about in uh, volume 34, which is the July to October 1899 issue, for you to read. I've got another edition of the Folklore Journal, which is volume 6. And I've got a biographical sketch of George Meikle Kemp, he was architect of the Scots Monument in Edinburgh. Uh, it was published in 1891 and as you know he died early unfortunately due to a, an accident falling into a canal and drowning. Terrible really that, just at the, the height of his success really. He could have gone on to do many more things but I thought it was a very interesting biography. And then I've, I found a handbook of deer stalking by Alexander McCrae. This was produced in 1880. And actually, it's quite fascinating. Uh, and in fact, I think that it has a lot of similarities here to those hunting deer, elk, and moose uh, in North America. Uh, because obviously, you've got to get near them to shoot them, and there's a lot of advice about how to do all that. So. It's not a big book, but I think it's, if you're a hunter, certainly well worth the read. And then I have uh, Bush Life in Queensland, or John West's Colonial Experience. Um, it's actually, uh, it's in two volumes, and I must confess, I, I, I haven't read it all, but I read a few chapters of the first volume, I really enjoyed it, but as I didn't have the time to read the rest, uh, I, I'm supposing the rest must be equally of interest. So I hope you, those in Australia will enjoy it and anyone just interested in what goes on in uh, Commonwealth countries will enjoy it. Okay, the next one is Kauros and Talianan. Uh, I actually got a book and I didn't know if I'd got it up or not on the site and I, I found that I had it up on the site. So. But while viewing the page, I noticed none of the videos were working. Brilliant. That's the YouTube issue, of course. So I did a search and I found three really good videos. I think they're all excellent. And Carl Ross is quite a place. It really is. So um, I hope you'll enjoy watching these new videos. And then uh, I've got the shipbuilders of Aberdeen. Stan Bruce has sent in 
a new book for the series. It's about the SS um, in Tabby. Uh, this was a, 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 a cruise ship that was designed for the South African market. And it's uh, really interesting. So again, I hope you'll enjoy reading that. And then Tartan Bay Parade in New York. I got in a communication from the American Scottish Foundation and they produced two links so you could watch bits of the Tartan Day Parade and the preparations beforehand. So uh, I put these up in our community so that you can just uh, click the links and, and watch them from there. Then I've got evidences of chiefship of Clan Gillian. That's Clan Maclean in Gaelic. But uh, essentially I thought, well, anyone that is part of the Clan Maclean should really know what's going on with the chief. So this is produced by Professor J.P. McLean in 1895. And so I've, I've added the book and you can get a link to it on the, our Clan McLean page. Uh, Angus McLeod, I've added him to our Significant Socks at the Scots section. So again, a very interesting person. Uh, He's actually got his own archive of uh, historical material up and I've given you a link to his website from there. Uh, and then Sketches of Old Times and Distant Places. It's by John Sinclair and it was produced in 1875. Frankly, he, he's a, a fantastic person. He's got so many contacts uh, all over, literally all over the world, that he's... Uh, selected various stuff. He's actually got three different sketches about McDonald's because he's connected to the McDonald's. Um, and uh, he's also got one about Niagara Falls because he visited there as well. Going all over the place, this guy. So I think if, if you start reading his articles, I think you'll find them really enjoyable to read. And none of them are overly long. I've actually, as the story this week, I've given you the one he wrote about Marshall MacDonald of France. So you, if you read that story and enjoy it, then I'm sure you'll enjoy all of his other stories he's put in this book. And then the uh, Pennsylvanian Magazine of History and Biography. Uh, this is a pretty prestigious publication and uh, I've had it uh, around for quite a while. I'd say I'm going to be putting that up because a lot of the Scots and Scots-Irish uh, settled in Pennsylvania before moving on further west. So uh, there's by, obviously by necessity, there's a lot of stuff about Scots within them. Uh, and I've put a link to a lot more volumes, about 2,000 volumes in all, on the Internet Archive. So I've also given you a link there so you can read the one I provided, but which is volume one. And then read all the ice if you wish, you know. Lots of reading to keep you going. And finally, I just stumbled across, by pure chance, a wee video about Pete Seeger. This was uh, an interview with Pete Seeger on the Internet Archive. And I've added a link to it from our Pete Seeger thread in our community, under our music community. It was actually... Um, Democracy Now is the TV program. And I watched it for a bit, didn't watch the whole thing, but he, he's obviously getting an old guy now and his voice isn't quite so good as it once was, but he sings a wee few songs on it and he's telling some great stories. So, I, I don't know, I really enjoyed it, but I just didn't have, didn't have the time to finish it. But I, I'm going to finish it because I, I really enjoyed watching it, so I hope you do too. And that's why I say I put it up in our community for you to watch. And then, as I mentioned, the story is about Marshall MacDonald, Duke of Tarentum. And it's uh, taken from that book that I mentioned to you. So uh, it's, it's, I hope you'll enjoy that one. Um, and if you want to read more about him, uh, I've got a whole book about him up on the website. So just Google Marshall MacDonald and you'll find it. Okay, so that's uh, all for this week. Uh, I might add, I got myself a new cell phone. I was, uh, um, I, I was checking my credit score. Um, I will say that um, 
I had a, a query on something there, so I phoned them up. And uh, while I was on there, they told me about that I had a, a mark against me from Telus, my it's my mobile phone service. Uh, apparently, I didn't pay a bill, was late paying a bill, and it's been noted on my record. But in actual fact, it's all squared away because all it was is I was paying by credit card and my expiry date expired. And because they didn't have a new expiry date, they couldn't get the money out of my account. But when they made it known, I sorted all that out and the, the balance was paid off and I was up to date again. So it just goes to show things like that can add to your, uh, your, your credit state. But while I was on to them, they said to me, you know, you've had your phone for about seven years. And you don't think you should be changing it to a more modern one? Um, so after discussing things with them, I've agreed to get myself a new Samsung one. Um, so I'm basically charging it up at the moment. So I, I, I struggle to get the Wii card in and I realised of course that the Wii uh, chip is tiny these days and it was still actually in the actual outer uh, hard plastic cover so I had to break it open to get the wee one out and then it slid in no problem so uh, I've got a new mob new mobile phone now and I'm told that it'll boot up in about 40 seconds from being off which is great news because my current one takes at least four minutes to do that and it's got a better camera and it's the same price only I lose apparently I, I benefit in getting local call in the whole of Canada from it uh, but at the same time I'll lose some of my data. I used to get 500 megabytes and now I'm only getting 150 but I don't use it that much so that's okay, it's not a problem. So anyway, we'll see how I go on with the new phone. When you get anything new you always get a time to settle in and make sure you know how everything works. Okay, so that's it for this week. So I hope you and had a great Easter weekend and managed to eat a, an actual uh, Easter egg and got a chocolate fix because after all you're meant to be able to eat chocolate at Easter with a clear conscience I might add. And as we had the big Easter egg treasure hunt at Nola's, it's a traditional thing they do every year. Easter time all the kids and everyone gets tons of clues and you follow the clues to find your Easter egg. And this year I found it quite easily. It's been the easiest amount of clues that I've ever had. And usually I have no idea what the clues mean. Okay, so anyway, there you go. That's it. And uh, as I say, I hope you have a good weekend when it comes. And look forward to hearing from you. Okay, have a good weekend when it comes.